Hello, Rebecca here. Um, today we're going to talk about the history of essential oils. And I'm really excited to share with you today what I've uncovered through my research. Um, I've come to the realization that essential oils have been used to support health and wellness for a very long time. This is not a new thing. They've actually been used for thousands and thousands of years and by many different cultures around the world. So today we're gonna to dive into this topic. I hope you find it as fascinating as I do um, because when used properly, essential oils can offer amazing benefits for our health. We can look and feel better. When we give our body what it needs, powerful things can happen. And instead of focusing on illness, we need to highlight the importance of living a healthy lifestyle, which essential oils help us do that. So as humans, we are spirit, soul, and body. Living in health and balance means healthy spirit, healthy soul, and healthy body. And it's easy for us to focus on the physical because that's what we can see. And even some on the spiritual, but our souls need to be healthy too. Our soul is our mind, our will, and our emotions. And so we're going to get into that a little bit. So scent and aroma is a really powerful bridge for us, between us and nature. And it's also a bridge that we can use to access emotions that we have stored in our bodies. We can trace the appreciation for scent and aroma a long way back, and we're going to do that today. So ancient civilizations have left us evidence of their uses of aromatic substances that were woven into their cultures. Plant oils have been used to relieve pain, treat ailment, prevent disease, inspire the soul, inspire the soul restore beauty, anoint kings, aromatic bathing, and so much more. So let's journey together back through time and unravel this story of essential oils. So we're going to talk about ancient civilizations and how they used essential oils. We're going to discuss how they were used in biblical times. We're going to discuss how they were used between the 1000 and 1800 um, AD. We're also going to talk about the 1900s and how we transitioned from natural options to more pharmaceuticals. Then we're going to talk about how Gary Young actually came upon essential oils and his story, and we're going to then talk about how that leads into Young Living's story and how that becomes part of our story. So don't mind me if I'm sipping. I've got an energy drink here. I have, it's Ningxia, Zing, and some kombucha. So um, a little bit of an afternoon pick-me-up here. Okay, so we're going to dive right in here. 5,000 BC in ancient Egypt, they were using essential oils. Egyptians have records of over 800 uses of essential oils. They used oils to anoint, nourish, heal, and detox the body. So this is pretty cool. In 1922, when King Tut's tomb was opened, they discovered 350 liters of essential oils, and they were stored in alabaster jars. And they had a plant wax seal over the top, which preserved the oil in the jars and so the oils remained intact. We also know that Egyptian beauty regimens were second to none, especially when it came to Cleopatra. She was known for her love of essential oils, her perfumes, she wore jasmine to relax, rose and myrrh for beauty and skin care. I also came upon a fact that said that when she had meetings, like business transactions, she would wear specific oils to get the results that she wanted from her, um, the outcome of the meeting that she wanted, which I thought that was very interesting. Um, they also had papyrus interpretations that revealed medicinal and perfume recipes. And even the hieroglyphics that have been depicted and interpreted show uses and recipes of essential oils. And then we have ancient China around 3000 BC. So in China, aromatics were used for meditation and healing well before the birth of Christ. They incorporated them into their traditional medicine. And I think we're all familiar with the term Chinese medicine. We all, when I hear that word, I think of, oh, natural herbal uh, remedies. And so they acknowledged the powerful effects of essential oils on the mind and the body. The early text included medical prescription from plants and aromatics to balance body energy, normalize blood flow and relieve pain. 
And essential oils at that time were valued above gold and jewelry as they are more potent than the plant themselves. Even in Arabia, there's actually a documented frankincense trail. It begins in Oman, which is in Saudi Arabia, and it goes all the way to the border of Israel. And it's believed that over the years, over 3,000 tons of frankincense were transported yearly. And now that would have been on camelback. They would have had donkeys. They would have had really uh, extreme terrains that they were crossing to get these, the oils and frankincense to the world. So Gary Young uh, actually got to travel and experience the Frankincense Trail, which is very cool. Ancient Greece, 400 BC, the Greeks established medical schools and cataloged the countless recipes and herbal preparations that they inherited from the Egyptians. And there was a Greek physician, his name was Galen. He compiled texts on plant medicines that offered treatment and relief from common ailments. He recommended aromatic oils for relaxation, digestive disorders, reducing fevers and anointings. And Hippocrates, that we all recognize that name as the father of medicine, he was actually quoted saying, I believe that a daily aromatic bath followed by a scented massage will promote good health. And he actually saved Athens from a devastating plague by fumigating the city with aromatics or essential oils. And in 325 BC in Macedonia, after Alexander the Great defeated Darius of Persia, he adopted the use of essential oils. They said his floors were sprinkled with scented waters and that his clothes carried fragrant resins. Alexander the Great was skeptical of medicines and doctors and was quoted saying, I'm dying from the treatment of too many physicians. I thought that was funny. So at the birth of Christ, um, why, we know that wise men came bearing gifts from afar. They brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh to the baby Jesus. And throughout scripture, we have discovered that essential oils were part of everyday life. They were used as anointing oil to consecrate priests and kings. They were used to beautify. They were used to bring joy to the heart through perfume. Essential oils were also used to cleanse. And we see examples of oils being put on people's clothes and even on their beds. Essential oils were such a common part of everyday life throughout the Bible that scripture includes over 600 references to essential oils and aromatic plants. And we, we know stories of Queen Esther, how she spent a year detoxing and cleansing and purifying her body before meeting the king, and she would have used essential oils. Ancient Rome. Romans took the use of aromatics to a whole new level. Their love for bathhouses became a focal point in their city life. They used oils to relax and uplift the mind. The Roman gladiators wore time for courage and strength. And the Silk Road, an ancient trade route that actually began in China, allowed them to acquire the highest prized goods such as spikenard, frankincense, myrrh, and other aromatics. So rulers would compete for the finest quality. Roman soldiers had a blend that they would use before going into battle, and this blend was for courage and bravery. Young Living actually has a blend. It's called Valor. I think I have it here. It's actually one of my favorites. I wear it a lot. It's amazing. Um, this blend that Young Living has, this Valor, is based on a recipe that the Roman soldiers used to put on before they would go to battle. And go away, leave their families and go away for, for battle and war. And in the British Historic Archives today, you can find the recipe that the Roman soldiers used of their aromatics. And this is what we have our Valor blend based off of. And I think that's pretty cool. In Iran, at, in 1000 AD, we had an, a physician, Avancina, he improved the quality of essential oils by developing the art of steam distillation. This dramatically improved the quality and the quantity of essential oils that they could get at a harvest. Now, this is actually how Young Living harvests their oils today. It's one of the ways, steam distillation, which is really cool. If you ever get to visit a farm and participate in that yourself, I highly recommend it. Very fascinating. So in 1400, 
in France, we have the Black Plague. So during this plague, some thieves were caught robbing from the sick and the dying. And upon their capture, it was discovered that they were spice traders and perfumers who had created a recipe that protected them from getting sick. As a punishment, the recipe was posted throughout the city for all to read. Gary Young, the founder of Young Living Essential Oils, used their recipe as the foundation for our famous Thieves Essential Oil Blend a blend that we use today to support our immune systems, which I think, I love that story. I think it's pretty cool. Then we have India. So the Ayurvedic system of health is estimated to be over 5,000 years old. Now what this is, is it's a healthy lifestyle system that emphasizes good health and prevention and treatment of illness through lifestyle practices and the use of herbal remedies. These remedies were used to assist the healing of imbalances in the body and in the mind. Records documented that Indian doctors administered numerous oils and their Veda, which is their most sacred text, confirms the use of oils and perfumes for religious and therapeutic purposes. Even their temples were built with sandalwood to ensure an aromatic atmosphere while worshipers anointed their bodies with rose and jasmine. I can imagine it smelled really great in there. Then we move forward in time. During the medieval times, the use of oils and aromatics were widespread. They were used for headaches, cramps, fainting, to prevent sickness and infection, for beauty and perfume, and as we talked about earlier, the perfumers used oils to protect themselves from getting sick. And in modern times today, instead of having our oils in vases and urns, we have access to amazing essential oils, same, same oils, but they come in small glass bottles. So we carry the same essential properties that our ancestors had. In the 1800s is when we begin to see pharmaceutical surface. Now, pharmaceuticals at the beginning were based on the constituents found in plants, but quickly drifted away in search of quick fixes. By the 1900s, the allegiance shifted from natural options to pharmaceuticals and medication, and sadly, essential oils were largely forgotten. Now, this is where I really start to get excited. I just love how, you know, they were valued and they were treasured all through history and they were used and then they were hidden. And we're going to unpack this story of how they have come to our homes today, of the journey of rediscovery, and it's, it's just super fun. So here we go. In 1930, Dr. René Maurice Gatfos, a French cosmetic chemist, burned his hand in his lab. Using what he had on available, he grabbed some lavender essential oil and applied it to the burn. He was amazed at how quickly the lavender took away the pain and how beautifully the skin healed. He then began focusing his studies on the healing power of essential oils. Excuse me. <coughs> in the 1940s in Vietnam, we have a doctor. His name is Dr. Jean Valnet. He used Dr. Gatfos's research to treat soldiers when the hospitals ran out of antibiotics. He successfully treated patients with essential oils. He found that the antibacterial properties of the oils help the wounds heal faster and with less infection. He was quoted saying, in recent years, both doctors and the public have rediscovered the medicinal value of essential plant oils. But the idea of using properties to maintain and regain health goes back to antiquity, ancient times. That's pretty cool. And then in France, in the 1980s, we have Dr. Jean Laprez. He was a student of Dr. Valnet, and he discovered that microbes could not survive in the presence of certain essential oils. And he was actually quoted saying, essential oils are especially valuable as antiseptics because they're aggressive towards microbial germs and are unmatched by their total harmlessness to tissue, which is important for us. We want these oils to work uh, fighting and protecting our bodies and yet being gentle with our bodies. So in 1985, Gary Young traveled to Europe in search for keys to health and in search for the lost knowledge 
of essential oils, he was determined to restore these forgotten therapeutics. So in 1991, Gary studied in France under Henry Viard, who was the father of distillation. He spent many years traveling back and forth between America and France, learning all he could. Now, what caused Gary to pursue his passion for essential oils? What caused Gary, a young farm boy from the mountains of Idaho, to journey to France in search for answers? Let's find out. I'm going to tell you a story. So Gary Young was born and raised in the mountains of Idaho. As a young boy, he dreamed of moving to Canada and homesteading the Canadian frontier. In 1968, he was given, actually no, in 1967, at the age of 17, he loaded his personal belongings into his Ford Mustang and drove all the way north to Quelsnell, BC. In 1968, he was given 320 acres 30 miles into the wilderness. There he began building his dream and forging his new life out in the wilderness. He built a horse ranch and a logging business. Little did he know that in the wilds of Canada, a destiny awaited him that would change his life forever. And it even changed ours. At the age of 24, on February 8th, 1973, Gary was in a severe logging accident a cut tree sheared off and hit him in the head. This accident resulted in three open skull fractures, a ruptured spinal cord in three places. Whoops, I did not mean to do that. One sec here. Um, 11 ruptured discs, 16 broken or crushed vertebrae, a broken pelvis, a right scapula that broke in nine places, a severed brachial plexus, and 19 broken bones, all which were included all on the right side and several on the left. So that's, that is a serious accident. <laughs> Suffering from intense pain and paralysis, except his right, hit, sorry, except his left arm, he was confined to a wheelchair with a medical prognosis that he would never walk again. His life became one of 13 drugs, including morphine and an antidepressant, and a world that seemed dark and hopeless with no light at the end of the tunnel. After two unsuccessful attempts at suicide, he sank into an even deeper depression. He had no insurance, so slowly everything he had built was sold to pay for his medical expenses. The logging equipment, his ranch, the livestock were all gone. In a third attempt to take his life, he fasted. No one could get him to eat. After 253 days of only drinking water and lemon juice, the most unexpected thing happened. He felt movement in his right toe. <laughs> his journey of intense pain and learning to walk again began. He was determined to find a new path of life where he could survive. Because he couldn't go back to farming and logging, logging he began exploring new options. His mind began exploring different avenues of healing through the world of books. He was determined to learn and find answers, answers that would help him, answers that would help others. In 1983, Gary met a woman from Switzerland. So this would be 10 years after his accident. And this woman from Switzerland introduced him to essential oils. This was the beginning of his path that led to thousands of discoveries and immense possibilities that they offer for physical, emotional, and spiritual application. He dedicated his life to bringing us the purest essential oils on the planet. In 1993, Gary built his first distiller in his kitchen by welding two pressure cookers together. Once he, could dist once he knew he could distill therapeutic grade essential oils, he began buying land and making his dreams a reality. In 1994, Gary and Mary Young founded Young Living Essential Oils. They kept growing and expanding. Gary built the first ever stainless steel steam distillers in North America. He had to design and create his own equipment because it had never been done before. His equipment was designed to maintain and capture the finest molecules for the therapeutic action of pure essential oils. 
1999, due to their unmatched quality, Young Living grew and expanded again, opening markets up in Canada, Australia, and Japan. And today they have markets all over, markets and farms all over the world. So Dr. Alan Hirsch, the director of the Smell and Taste Treatment and Research Foundation said, the future of medicine lies in aromatherapy. In the future, every home medicine cabinet will contain essential oils. Young Living remains the world leader in essential oils today. They are the original essential oil company in North America, and they lead the world in research and development of essential oils. And as I mentioned, have markets and farms around the globe. Young Living has been around for over 26 years. They began as an essential oil company and have developed into a lifestyle company, infusing all their products with their ther therapeutic grade essential oils. Young Living is empowering individuals and families to achieve their highest potential and enjoy increased physical, mental, spiritual, emotional, and financial health. Young Living is connecting the golden road of essential oils to a modern world in need of natural solutions. Gary made a way for us to reconnect with our creator and his original plan for our health and wellness. He was once called the modern day Moses for leading people from chemical bondage to the freedom of natural products and essential oils. We're gonna watch a short video here of that Young Living produced a few years ago about Gary and his journey and his story of his discovery to essential oils. <laughs> Told you he's too big for you. Hey, good luck. He'll be back. de la lavande de France. One month. Excusez-moi. I'll be there in one month. Ils ne sont pas prêts pour ça.
I just love that video. You know, when I think back, Gary went through a lot of struggles and a lot of darkness, you know, and he, but he didn't give up. And I know that a lot of times we may struggle and we may be in darkness, but we don't know what is ahead of us on the road. If Gary had given up, we would not have these amazing oils that we have today. We would not have Young Living Essential Oils. And just a word of encouragement that if you're feeling in a dark place or um, not sure of what's ahead, you know, the, the key is just keep going. And you know what? You may have a huge impact in your life that affects many, many people around the world that you don't know about yet. And just like Gary, he did not give up. He persisted. He pushed boundaries. He pushed himself. And we get to benefit from that today. And we know that natural options for health, or sorry, natural options for healthcare today are considered alternatives, but they're actually the original. Oils that we have in our home today are so powerful and so effective. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. And I know that, you know, not everybody understands the power that essential oils hold and the benefits that we can have for them in our health and our wellness. But the key is just keep going. Just keep using your oils and sharing your stories. Gary has a story. Young Living has a story. The doctors have their stories that we're learning about oils. And the Greeks, the Egyptians, they all have a story. And you have a story. And it's important that we share our stories with our friends and our families. Because we might have some information that can change somebody's life. So thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for listening to this um, presentation on the history of essential oils. It means a lot to me. It makes me feel so excited and helps me see the value in these oils that they've been treasured and used for centuries through cultures and different stages and seasons of life. And we have the opportunity to use them today and have them in our home, in our own homes. So enjoy your oils, use your oils, put them on yourself, put them on your family and your friends, and know that you are doing a good thing to in your life and in the lives of others. So thank you again so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the presentation.